So hey there everybody, welcome to the Granite Dells where I've had an incredibly frustrating morning with doing some video waypoint missions. I still haven't gotten the gimbal pitch to carry over from the recorded locations. So each of the locations that we fly and film, um, I've got to go in and manually set the gimbal tilt after I set up a waypoint mission in the field. Really annoying, but um, we'll get it resolved. In the meantime, while I'm out here, I got a question from one of our subscribers who wanted to know about the uh, de-warp and warp when it comes to still images, whether we're doing raw images or JPEGs. So I'm going to put the drone up in the air in just a minute and we're going to go through a, a warped image, a de-warped image, and a raw, and we'll compare those. I already know that the de-warping actually crops in our JPEGs a little bit, so when warping is on, there are vignettes going all the way around your still images that are JPEGs. When you put de-warp on, it cuts out those vignettes, and then finally, when you put raw on, the raw gets the full-sized image and the de-warp doesn't really do anything with it. All right, so let's jump onto the drone and we'll get the drone up in the air and we're gonna take three photos and you'll also see on screen the warp versus de-warp. All right, Jody, you can stop with that one and I'm gonna get this fired up. All right, so we're just getting everything fired up here, folks. All right, looks good. All right, everyone, we've got the drone up in the air, so let's take a couple of photos, shall we? First, I'm gonna go into our photo settings, and I'm gonna go to JPEG. So we are going to be shooting in JPEG here. And let's arrow back. And in JPEG, we're gonna have de-warping turned on, all right? So let's go ahead and take our photo. There we go, so JPEG with de-warping turned on. And now we're gonna double check this. JPEG. And de-warping turned off. There we go. So JPEG with de-warp off. All right, took the shot. Now let's go back in here again. Let's go over to the camera and let's go to raw. So we've selected raw here. All right. And with RAW, we're going to do de-warping is off. All right. And now we're going to go and do de-warping turned on. And so there we go. We did the JPEGs and we did the RAW. And now we'll take a look at these on screen back in the studio. Okay, everybody, we're back in the office. Gorgeous day today out in the Granite Dells. Definitely had some frustrations doing some additional testing with the Mavic 3 Enterprise and trying to set up some video waypoint missions. That is in a totally different video, and that's going up to our new class over at classes.azdrone.net. But let's finish following up on the question about the de-warping feature on the Mavic 3. So we had one of our subs ask that recently. So I just wanted to show you a couple of images. So after we got done with our testing, I went and I threw the drone up into the air and I took two images JPEG format and two images RAW format. So what we've got here is the first JPEG and second JPEG, and then we've got the two RAW files. Now, I had set one JPEG to dewarping turned on and one to dewarping turned off. Did the same thing on the RAWs. One I had it turned on, the other I had it turned off. And let's, we're just gonna drag these down into Lightroom here so that we can take a look. Hello Lightroom, there you are. All right, and I am not, I'm gonna go ahead and import all the photos. And I'm not gonna give any keywords or anything here. Let's just open these up and see what's going on. All right, so what are we looking at here? We've got our first JPEG 003, and then we've got our second JPEG 004, and then we've got our first DNG and our second DNG. Let's open up the first JPEG. This was with de-warping turned on, so no warping was going on, and the second one is with de-warping turned off. So as you can see, or maybe you can't, so let's zoom. 
Um, with de-warping off, we have this vignetting going on in all of our corners. Hello, vignette right down there. And also a little vignetting down there. And it's most pronounced in the sky. You can see this up there. So if we arrow back to the first one where de-warp was turned off, this is a JPEG. Look at the difference between when I show each of these. Basically, the de-warping turned on has cropped this image a little bit for us. So it's still a four by three aspect ratio, but it's absolutely been cropped. Let's zoom up here one more time and I'm gonna arrow back. So that one's gone. And I'm gonna arrow forward. And there is that, uh, there is that vignetting again. So if you look between the two of these, there is a slight adjustment um, cropping things in. So let's go back. So there we go, zero, zero, three and de-warping on. 004, de-warping off, we see that warping. If I was taking a regular photo for a client, most likely I'm gonna to have to go in here and do a little bit of cropping. So if you're doing standard images, standard JPEGs of a site, let's say, um, not flying for mapping or modeling or anything, just standard image, you might want to go and set the JPEG and make sure that de-warping is turned on. Now here's what gets interesting, I'm gonna arrow over so Let's go over to image five, VDNG. And so I had actually turned the de-warping on and off between five and six, but here's something interesting. It stuck, it did not uh, utilize the de-warping um, turned on. So both of these images are the same, just a slight difference in exposure because, you know, it was a few seconds later taking the shot. but. If we look at these, you know, we see just a touch of drift, but neither of these has those fringes. So when I'm shooting in RAW, and I have run into this before, so this isn't new, uh, but I just wanted to do this video for the channel to answer our subscribers question. But um, so when we're shooting in RAW, um, the warping is basically going to be off and it does capture the entire uh, sensor area. So you don't really need to worry about the de-warping button when doing raw files. But if you are doing JPEGs, then you need to double check if the de-warping is on or off, if you want those vignettes or you don't want those vignettes. Now, the next question would be, Rich, you know, what's the deal with the de-warping on and off? Let me tell you. So we picked up the uh, drone in July, uh, the Mavic 3E. And um, there's a lot of strange little things with it. A lot of, you know, very hidden things that we're not sure. Hey, why is this doing this? Why is this working like this? But um, in the case, if you are doing mapping and modeling, I would suggest that you have D-Warp turned off. Okay, so we're going to have those vignetted edges. I've read all over the different DJI forums. It's a really mixed bag. Some people are saying you want de-warping off for your maps and models, and there's some stuff going on behind the scenes in, in the DJI application and the Pilot 2 application. I really couldn't tell you. I'm not a developer for DJI. What I have found through my own independent testing and recommendations of other people on like the Mavic forums, for instance, is that if you're doing your mapping and modeling, de-warping should be off. I'm also going to say this. Um, when I'm doing the mapping and modeling, I am using JPEGs, not RAW files. So I've got the JPEGs, de-warping is turned off, so they've got that vignetting, but it's all getting crunched together um, in our 3D modeling applications after we've returned. Now, I want to show you, because this is one thing that stood out to me. So when i did the de-warping on and off for the uh for the raw files the dngs you'll notice 43.4 megs and then the next one was 43.4 megs as well so same exact size with that on or off but then we'll notice if the first one here uh the first jpeg is nine megs and the second jpeg is slightly bigger and it's got that vignetting. So like I said, there's some kind of crop going on when you turn de-warp, uh, de-warping on. So when you're getting rid of those vignettes, it is making a small cropping decision for you. And like I said, I've been through a lot of the forums before doing this video. I went back and read some more of the forums again. 
And it's all over the place as to whether or not you should have it on or off when you're doing your models. What I have seen and the quality that I've seen in my models recently for several of our build sites um, is that I will be using JPEG with the D-Warp off when we're doing models. And if I'm doing standard still photos with this thing, um, then I'll be shooting either RAW or JPEG with the de-warping turned on. All right. So there's the quick answer. And I'm sorry I can't solve the bigger question of what is going on. Why do we have this de-warping? What is it buying us? Um, I've read a mixed bag of reviews from some people. I've read some very technical articles that then the next person who came along said, oh, no, it's completely opposite of that. Bottom line for flying this drone, you know, you're going to need to do experimentation of your own as you're getting into this drone. Because like I said, there are some definite oddities in it. And one of the other things that I found, I set up a uh, waypoint mission, a photography waypoint mission, um, where I wanted it to capture JPEG and RAW. You have not seen this video on my channel yet. It's going into my uh, new class at azdrone or classes.azdrone.net. So that's where you'll be able to see that one probably in a couple weeks. But um, so we did this photo uh, time, or we did this photo uh, flight path, and I set it to JPEG and RAW, and it returned JPEG only to me even though I know I had the settings right. So it's just weird little things like that that do come up with this drone on a regular basis. All right, everybody, I hope this was helpful and useful. I'd love to get comments down in the comment section that, uh, you know, pertaining to de-warping on or off and what you've heard about it or bring your expertise to it. We'd love to hear from you. All right, everyone, we'll see you again real soon.